add to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that uh, it's able to uh, spread across the country. I think there's no reason it can't work across the country. Um, I think that Housing First has proven to be more difficult than we would like for our politicians to be able to support. Um, uh, you know, to varying degrees, some are able to and not all are able to. Um, so that's the only barrier. Um, apart from that, yes, it, it can and should proliferate across the country, especially because the folks who are uh, saved by, housing for, by ho the Housing First model in my experience, you know, doing street engagement, working with unhoused folks, uh, meeting folks in housing first, they're the folks who are who are most at risk, most vulnerable, most likely to die on, on the street. So and, and that's why one of the reasons I think the housing first model is so uh, is so important um, is that it is it helps those who, who need the help the most the quickest. Right. Should I add something to that? Absolutely. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, we don't want to go back to how it was with all those, how did Rudy call it? The talent show? The homeless talent show, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I called it, I always called it the shoots and ladders effect. You know, the game shoots and ladders, where you mm -hmm. climb up the ladder so high and you're almost there and then boom, they throw a drug test on you. You're all the way at the bottom again. And that is so costly and it's time, it takes a lot of time. And a lot of, uh, you know, intensive case management with folks just over and over and over. And it just, it's so much smoother to work alongside someone when they're housed. That's all I just want to say. Yeah. And I just want to say that housing first is actually something that has been signed on to across the country. Um, this is something that nationally is considered a best practice approach. And Although there are still um, st still folks who function within the traditional paradigm approach to so supportive services, um, the the norm nowadays is that everybody's um, signing on to a housing first approach because it's proven to work. It, it's proven effective. My favorite experience was one that I was helping people. It felt amazing to be helping people. The other was uh, Adam sending me a video. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, but overall, it's like, even though it was for kind of a sad cause, I did enjoy the time I did get to spend with my family. Um, you know, we got to bake and together. That was fun. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a good time. That's great. Baking memories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and um, it was so fun sending you the video, Taylor, because I was so inspired by what you did. And and you know the most important thing to me is when people see our show and they it actually makes an impact on them. And it obviously made an impact on you. And and it was really meaningful for me to to hear that. That's why I do what I do. So so mm -hmm. thank you so much. Yeah, my dad really liked the show, so he kind of passed that on to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Taylor, I just wanted to send my deepest condolences to you and your family. And um, your dad must have been such an incredible human being to have a daughter yeah. like you. Yeah. And, um, and like I said, baking memories. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. My, uh, my dad was actually sleeping in his car at one point before... Oh. He was homeless for a little while, for a while. Oh. Um, so I, and with, um, I know in the episode it mentioned the uh, housing market crashed in 2008 and my parents lost their house. So oh it was God. like they had to move in with family. Otherwise they were going to be homeless. And it was, yeah. wow. it was hard. You know, when I, I was just born. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so this is a very personal topic to you. I didn't realize that. I didn't either. Wow. Well, we have one more question, and I think it's a great question by Anonymous Unicorn, who is saying, um, he's, an Anonymous Unicorn is asking, how are young people like Taylor able to expand their work and engage their peers in these efforts? I think that's such a good question. Um, you know, I, I think um, Taylor, do you want to do you want to answer that? 
And then I can chime in about what people can do in terms of locally here in LA. Yeah, I think that, you know, they just have to like share it. They have to spread the word. Otherwise, I mean, I think obviously a lot of people know about it, but I think the new generation needs to know more about it so they can, they can talk about it with their peers. They can make a difference. They can, and it's not just like, it's not just creating a charity. It's like, you know, even donating some money is not, it's, that is so, it's so contributing and so helpful. It's just one small thing can make a huge difference. Right now with the holidays approaching, and I spell holidays D-A-Z-E at the end because the holidays are really tough for the people that we serve because most of them are alone. Um, but in answer to that question, um, one of the things that we like to do is team up with local schools when possible to um, create food baskets or um, hygiene kits or move-in kits because you see what we do at Housing Works, it's really about how do we ensure people who are moving into their housing actually have a place that feels like a home. And so one way that we can team up with young people is to figure out like how can they coordinate efforts with their peers in their schools, in their churches, in, in their places of gathering. You know, social media allows for so much coordinate coordination and collective effort nowadays. And I think one of the things that we need to do better at Housing Works is find some young folks out there who can help us um, continue the effort around building up collective effort um, around some of these things. So thank you for asking that question because it's really important, I think. You know, I grew up in a small town where giving back to the community was really instilled in us. And I know that that is who helped shape me into becoming the adult that I am today. And I, I get real concerned with, with social media in that it's good and bad, but part of what concerns me about the way we are in this digital era is that it's further removing us from being present in person with each other. So, um, Taylor, you've got a lot of people rooting for you, saying you're an inspiration, and thank you for everything you're doing. And so I want to bring this to a close, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Adam, for giving us your Friday night. Thank you, Taylor Lund, yes. for giving us your time on a Friday night and in a different time zone as well. And and Dorothy, thank you for being here, and everybody who has um, who, who, who tuned in and, and who joined us today, thank you so much.